All right. Welcome back to chapter two, section 2.2. .2. This is day two of that section. And we're going to look at how we can answer questions about any normal distribution. Uh, the key here is that many times in our normal distributions, they aren't always standard. And again, remember, standard distribution is when our mean here is zero and our standard deviation is one. And then we can use table A to help answer any of those questions. Okay. Um, but most of the time they aren't standard normal. So we have to standardize, we have to standardize uh, our uh, mean and standard deviation and any score we're looking for in order to use table A. Okay. And we do that with a z-score. Yeah, so we're going to have to remember our z-score formula of as z equals x minus mu all over sigma. So let's go up here and actually change this. Let's go change this to a, st a standard normal distribution that we've got something with, say, a mu, a mean of 7 and a standard deviation of 2. Certainly not a standard normal distribution. And I'd be interested in saying, well, I wonder what, if I got this score down here, uh, that's 5. Well, what's the area to the left of that curve? We know the area underneath the curve because the density curve is 1, certainly less than 0.5 because this is halfway right here. What is this area inside there? Well, that's where standardizing this data can help us do that, and then we can use table A to help with that. So we got to find a z-score. Well, we know the score we have that separates that value there. That's 5. Our mean is 7, our standard deviation is 2, and if we do the math real quickly on this, this actually comes out to be negative 1. So uh, in standardizing this, we would have made this 0, this 1, that's what the z-score does. It standardizes it to a mean of 0, a standard deviation of 1. That 5, in a sense, now is negative 1. And that's the value that we need to look up on uh, our... Uh, Z chart. Okay. And I've got that ready right here. So we're going to look up negative 1.0. Okay. And that's right here along with the 0, 0. So we'll cross reference it to be this value right here. That's 0.1587 or just a little shy of 16% of the data. So uh, when we go back to this, we know then that the area within here, that's that 0.1587, or again, roughly 16% uh, of the data is down below that value. So this is what, they, what you gotta do, is you gotta draw the normal curve. In fact, it is a necessity. You must, when calculating normal distributions, the AP examiner wants you to draw the uh, normal curve and indicate the area that you are trying to find. Uh, so uh, have that value you have here and indicate what the mean and the mean, uh, the mean and the standard deviation are. So again, you want to see the mean, standard deviation, and then the boundaries where you're defining that. And make sure you shade. Make sure you shade the graph for the area of interest that you're looking for. From the calculations like I just showed here, you're going to compute that z-score, uh, and then, then once you get the z-score, you can use table A. The technology piece I will show with, uh, with a video within a video uh, at the end of this uh, PowerPoint. But we're going to move on and look at going backwards. Because sometimes you're looking at problems where you have your normal distribution, and there's your mean, and your standard deviation would be stated. And you're interested in saying, hey, I wonder what the score is down here. I wonder what that x value is that separates this bottom 40% from this top 60%. That's that top 60% here. That's that bottom 40% there. Uh, so again, we're interested in what that score is that separates that. Well, uh, when we do this again, Again, draw the normal curve uh, with the area of interest shaded. Okay, 
So this is the area of interest that speak, that I'm uh, going to shade here. I'm looking for the score that separates the bottom 40% from the top 60%. Indicate the mean, the standard deviation, and then what that unknown, what that unknown boundary value is. We're looking at that unknown boundary value right here. We're looking to find out what score separates that. And let's use the same numbers that we had from the previous slide that say we're dealing with a normal distribution that has a mean of 7 and a standard deviation of 2. We want to find out what that score is. Well, if we're going to use table A, uh, again, we're going to involve a z-score. The technology piece I will show you uh, with the video within a video. So, we need to find that score. So we have to use the z-score. The formula again, z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. Well, there's a couple things we have, and there's a couple things we don't have. Uh, you know, if I look at this formula, we certainly have the mean and the standard deviation over here. We don't have the x, that's what we're trying to find. And I don't have the z-score, but I do have the corresponding uh, area under the curve to find that. And we can use that uh, z chart to help us find the z-score. So again, the z-scores are out here. The z-scores are all right over here on the side. Okay? So I don't know the z-score, so I can't use these values. I'm trying to find these one of these values based off the information that's inside the chart. So kind of the way I like to think about it, if you've got a number on the inside of the graph, you're going to use a number on the inside of the chart here to go find the number on the outside of the chart to find the number on the outside of the graph. Now we were looking for 0 0.400 and if we look down in here you know, it's probably somewhere right in between here and here. So we're going to look for the closest one that's uh, that's to 0 0.4000. Uh, this, uh, this one here is only 13 off or this one here is 26 off. This is the closest to 0 0.400. So we're going to look over here to the negative 0.2 and then up to the 0 0.05 and put those pieces together and uh, would have a z-score of negative 0.25. Well, that's the z-score that we have here. That's that z-score. So I know negative 0 0.25 is that z-score that corresponds to that 40%. That's from the left up to that value. So that I can use that now to find that x, knowing that the mean is 7 and the standard deviation is 2. With a little simple algebra here, multiply both sides by, point, by 2, you get negative 0.5 equals x minus 7. Add 7 to both sides, so x would be 6.5. This value right here is 6.5. That's the score that would separate the bottom 40% from the top 60%. Okay? And that's how we'd use table A to find scores on the outside given scores on the inside. Well, now what I'm going to do um, is show the video that uh, does uh, the technology for this first part back here uh, in terms of uh, finding areas underneath a normal curve. Um, and then I'll also do the uh, video that will play right after that, right with it, uh, how to work backwards. How if you have a, an area on the inside, how to find that value on the outside. So uh, we do have that in Schoology. And uh, you can certainly play that yourself or simply watch here as we go uh, along. So it is in the calculator videos. It is the first video here, number five. And I'll press that and we can play that right in our video. Hello, I'm Lena Taro. Let's take a look at how we can use the TI Inspire to work with normal distribution calculations. Let's first go to the scratch pad. So hit the home menu and choose option A. This gives us you don't have to go to the scratch pad. You can actually just go to the calculator icon down the bottom. To begin, hit Menu, 
choose option 6, Statistics. Then choose option 5, Distributions. Then choose option 2, Normal CDF. Notice we have a template to fill in here. We need to fill in the lower bound and the upper bound, but the mean and standard deviation have already been entered for us. The calculator assumes we want to work with a standard normal distribution, which has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. We need to figure out what proportion of observations from a standard normal distribution are greater than negative 1.78. So I'm going to delete this first line and type negative 1.78 as my lower bound. Then hit tab to get to the next line. Technically, my upper bound is positive infinity. However, I really just need to enter a large number here. 10,000 should be large enough. I'm going to tab until I get down to OK and hit enter. So the proportion of observations under a standard normal distribution that are greater than a z-score of negative 1.78 is about 96%. Let's do another one of those calculations. Menu, Statistics, Option 5 for Distributions, Number 2 for Normal CDF. This time, let's figure out what proportion of observations from a standard normal distribution are between negative 1.25 and 0.81. So we'll delete to clear this out. Negative 1.25 is our lower bound. Tab to get to the next field. 0.81 is our upper bound. And once again, we're working with a standard normal distribution. I hit enter on OK. And we can see that about 68.5% of observations under a standard normal curve will fall between a z-score of negative 1.25 and 0.81. Now let's work in reverse. Let's say that we're given an area or a percentage and we need to figure out the z-score that goes with it. That would be an inverse normal calculation. But before we do that calculation, let's clean up this screen. Go to Menu, hit 1 for Actions, 5 to Clear History, and that clears our screen. Now let's do our inverse normal calculation to see what z-score corresponds to a 90th percentile. To do this, hit Menu, choose Option 6, Statistics, Option 5, Distributions, then choose Inverse Norm. The 90th percentile would correspond to an area of 0 0.90. And once again, we're working with a standard normal distribution, so the calculator automatically puts 0 and 1 in those locations. However, if you're working with a distribution that was not a standard normal distribution, you would have to enter the mean and standard deviation that correspond to the distribution you're working with. Tab down to OK and hit Enter. So the z-score that's associated with the 90th percentile is 1.28. All right. Well, at this point then, you should be able to do uh, the problems from day 2 in section 2.2, numbers 53, 55, 57, and 59. All right, good luck.